see our first glimpse of a technique I used throughout the movie. Want to make a big scary monster look even more menacing? Put it in a dome. Monster doesn't look scary enough already? Put it in a dome. Want the audience to know when a monster really means business? Put it in a dome. <laughs> I was a huge fan of the old classic movie, The Flea, from 1958. So I created this monster as sort of a sort of an ama homage, ama homage, homage, um, uh, in respect to that film. I have the darndest time with that word homage. Man, that whip. We probably should have invested in some training courses so the actors knew how to properly handle it, but instead we just let them flail it around wildly. You know that saying, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye? That's true. And that's the story of why the Emperor wears that metal monocle. Greg was a real trooper about it, though. Didn't even seem phased that he'd have to wear an eye patch for the rest of his life. I think he went on to do some pirate theme promotions at his used car lot once we wrapped up production. Why has it not pulverized the intruders already? Well, well, John Eminence, I was installing photon lasers into its eyes. I have finished. So, the Mechameleon might be somewhat, well, blind. My indomitable. 
veritable guardian is blind? I do not tolerate failure, Doctor. Uh, getting these two to do their scenes together was enough to make your head spin. They weren't, strictly speaking, actors. Well, not in your usual sense. Ludwig here, or Dr. Peculiar, actually was a doctor. I think I told you that before. Uh, Greg, our emperor, well, that's a whole different can of beans. Our casting guy found him on a used car lot. Greg talked him into buying just a horrible car. Thing never ran. Oh, then when he tried to get his money back, Greg just laughed maniacally, so doggone it, he offered Greg the role right on the spot. He said, Dan, this guy is perfect. No, oh, no, another fake scene. We were running out of extras and clay sculptures, but we needed more monsters. Oh, please, more monsters. So we had this brilliant idea. If you stick a puppy inside an old vacuum cleaner, wham, instant monster. Throw in a string of Christmas lights and it's camera ready in five minutes. And that had to be some kind of world record or something. Fun fact, boys and girls, cinematographers don't like it when you use their dog without asking permission first. But hey, to that I say, what goes around comes around. Little Buster here ruins so many shots barking all day long. You don't want me to grab your dog and cover him in Christmas lights? Well, don't bring him to work. at the altitude where Dick's rocket ship had crash-landed at the start of the film. 
When I think back about all the work we did, building this darn tower and making models and costumes and sets and props, and then trying to keep it all straight during filming and not getting anything all mixed up. Ah, uh, it's exhausting. Just thinking back on it is exhausting. I wish I could tell my younger self to just direct romantic comedies. It's the only way you'll get a good night's sleep. Rotating contraption things. We actually used Ferris wheel parts from an old amusement park. I think it was called Dizzyland. D Dizzyland? Isn't that kind of close to. Yeah, and the courts agreed with you. They shut them down before they opened the gates. <laughs> well, it's their own fault, I guess. Well, naturally, my production team swooped right in and bought up everything they could get their hands on. So, I guess there was a silver lining to their legal battles. One man's lemon is another man's lemonade. Or however that saying goes. The statue of the Emperor is actually as big as it looks on screen. Yeah, we were going to use a small model and green screen it, but then Greg offered to fund building a life-size version. He was planning on setting it up front and center of his used car lot. Apparently, he ran into some issues with zoning laws. Yeah, I told him he should just play dumb and put the thing up anyway, but he wouldn't listen. I guess that's why he's still running that same lot. Whereas I've been barred from filming in 12 different states.
If I told you how much gold paint we used on these darn sets, you wouldn't believe me. We were originally trying to decorate this whole set in precious stones. I wanted that sparkling effect, but then my props guy shook his head. I've learned that when he shakes his head, it's best to go with plan B. Unfortunately, plan B meant a cement mixer filled with gold paint. Uh, it was so much hard work, even I had to finally roll up my sleeves, dive in, and call some interns from the community college. Man, there's nothing college kids won't do for free pizza. This place looks familiar. to the wise when the guy funding your movie offers you a suggestion stupidest idea ever is a phrase you should shy away from Don't worry, I have the right clip now. I think.
scene reminds me of a big fight I had with the studio head. Word to the wise, when the guy funding your movie offers you a suggestion, stupidest idea ever is a phrase you should shy away from. have come here to end your empire and free these apes from your tyranny. <laughs> you? Tell me, do you think I need these pitiful creatures to run my empire? Allow me to show you something. As you can see, I do not need those darn dirty apes. It is a kindness that I allow them to survive. I give them work so they believe their life has purpose. All I truly want from them is their gold. Gold? Ha! What gold? Have you not seen the result of Gravoria's planet-wide radiation? When living beings die, their bodies are transmuted into solid gold. The apes are useless. I send my minions to harvest more gold from my empire. You are a cruel, heartless monster. Perhaps. Perhaps. Whoa, 
that scene always makes me woozy. Hey, Patrick, I, I think we need a break. on your average elevator? Still, it's even worse when you press all the buttons on a real elevator. People get so annoyed when you do that. Nowadays, we just click, click, and make all this in 3D with those computers or something. But no computers here. No, heck no. I still don't know how to work one of those damn contraptions. Construction 101. To make it look nice, you gotta make it look shiny. That's the secret ingredient, you know. production babies while making this movie. One of them was even named after one of the characters, Macmillan J. Peterson.
skydiving myself, but I have a crippling fear of heights. Wow, really? So, was this movie your way of tackling that fear head on? Ha! <laughs> nah, this movie is what gave me my fear of heights. By the end of it, I was directing scenes with my eyes closed to keep from getting panic attacks. Now it's all starting to make sense. it will be to recapture them all? Dr. Peculiar, why is my dinosaur army running amok? Oh, well, let them roam the island. But, your eminence, what if they trample on some of my hybrid specimens? That, that would be like turning Gregor Mendel's pea garden into soup and forcing him to drink it. Mendel Schmendel, Doctor. I gave you gold to spawn me a dinosaur army, and I expect my army to kill things! Certainly, your eminence. But whatever you command, it is so hard to do real science under these conditions. motion team was so stellar and they worked for peanuts they really did i just couldn't get enough of them the script called for a lot of dinosaurs here so i said hey let's set the record i told the team i wanted a minimum of 30. of course we found out later we were absolutely nowhere near the world record but i didn't have the heart to tell them i made them eat some fake plaques and Send them their way.
Okay, okay. Now you can stop. No need to go further. If you break even a single egg, why? I'll, I'll scramble your brain! Genetically modified carnivorous dinosaurs. Similar <laughs> <laughs> lightning switch. Searching. Available rocket ship detected. Some people wondered why we had that third lower exhaust pipe on Robot, even though it didn't shoot flames when he hovered. It was purely a matter of necessity. Wearing a suit that takes hours to put on? I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Space, the final frontier, where no man has gone before. 
these are the voyages of... Whoops. Sorry, I got kind of carried away with something else there. scientist I had never seen men on Graboria before it's funny because when she says that line it almost sounds like she's insulting Dick's masculinity none of us caught it in the filming but at the premiere I saw the reaction on Jonathan's face <laughs> whoops Well, the official stance is, yes, the henchmen can breathe without helmets on. I get asked that a lot by people trying to find plot holes. And that's your answer, people. It's not a plot hole. It's not like we ran out of budget and couldn't afford to buy more glass bubbles. No, sir, that's nonsense.
You're, you're... Who are you? You're, you're... Illogical. You are not an earthling. scenes went on a little too long in my movie, but there wasn't enough story and exposition. Um, excuse me, what kind of movie did you decide to go see? An action movie, you say? Last time I checked, dialogue wasn't a movie genre. A frog toy gun always makes me chuckle. A frog shaped gun that shoots flies. Doctor, from where did those clones originate? than I ever imagined. My father never told me about this place. Ah, that is because he does not know it exists, my dear. He supplies me this gold, and I hand him little robot toys he can pay with. Little does he know, I convert most of the gold into my own experiments. Experiments like my army. Of atomic monkeys! <laughs> ah, the doctor. After the first few outbursts, I tried firing him. He was heartbroken, devastated. And then the next day, he'd just show back up to work <laughs> like nothing happened. I couldn't bear to fire the man twice. That look on his face the first time. Oh well, I <laughs> just made it work. In retrospect, he was a bit creepy though. Always hanging around the ladies' makeup trailer. So, so creepy. Oh well, who can blame him? We had some really nice eye candy on the set. <laughs> but he was creepy. <laughs>
Invisible men are always cool. And the great thing is, they're easy to cast because of obvious reasons. <laughs> Actually, that's what I wish I was when my ex-wife or IRS come knocking at my door. Uh, forget I said that. Patrick, we've been recording for a while. Can we take a break now? Well, we're a little behind, but sure, let's take a fiver. Oh, man. Man alive, that feels great to get those headphones off. Whew. Whew. That's a load off my shoulders, which uh, is actually a load off my head, which is a load off my shoulder. But anyway, you know, I got to level with you. Most of the cast, not that great. Worst acting I've seen, probably. Yeah, we'd shoot some scenes a dozen times just to get it right. Hey, I want to... Hey, you're not recording any of this, right? Oh, uh, nah, it's all good. I'll just make a note to edit this stuff out. actor just pick up a film reel? So that's what happened to all my missing footage. Oh, how did I ever let this make it into the final cut? Thank <laughs> you. 
Jonathan, that was an odd one. He used to tell me that after he makes it big, he doesn't want to be Jonathan Digby anymore. He wants to be J. Dig. He thought it would start a trend or something. Can you imagine that? <laughs> the first letter of his name and then the first syllable of his last name? <laughs> it's so absurd. That's the sort of thing that would never catch on. Oh, especially in the entertainment industry. <laughs> These sleep chambers were pretty much a mystery. Just how in the world do they work? Are they teleporting the heroes somewhere? Shrinking them down? <laughs> Who knows? But, sir, shouldn't you know? I mean, it's your movie. Patrick, a director can't know everything about his film. If he did, it would be no fun for him to watch it. Also, I called in sick a lot, so a lot of the scenes were handled by my cinematographer. across the planet for the heroes to pick up to explain how they're able to keep improving all their equipment. But how does adding gears to something like a baton or sword suddenly make it better? I mean, how do gears even factor? Hey, uh, Patrick, let me stop you right there. Are you an engineer? Well, technically, I'm an audio engineer. Exactly. Didn't think so. Hey, keep that in mind next time you criticize things outside your realm of experience.
you have any idea what sort of blood, sweat, and tears went into creating this army and making them all move around on cue? No, seriously, do you? Because I'm still stumped by this. I watched the scenes, and I just, um, flabbergasted by the amount of work someone must have done to make all this happen. <laughs> Tried a lot of names before we settled on Dick Starspeed. Let's see, we had uh, Lancer or Lance Laser, Gary Galaxy, Samuel Satellite, Nacho Nova. <laughs> that was my favorite. Yeah, we did a whole lot of those same first letter thing for a while there. <laughs> The execs wanted us to go with Dick, though. For a while, we were gonna go with Dick Missile, I think. The studio didn't care much, as long as we steered clear of Uranus and black holes. Dick Missile penetrating deep into a black hole, then going to Uranus. <laughs> that would have been a knee slapper. <laughs> had a blood vessel burst in her eye on our first day of shooting and tried asking for the rest of the day off. You expect us to pay you nothing to do nothing, I told her? But then it gave me the idea for these exploding eyeball monsters, so I let her take a full 15 minute break for lunch that day.
might have gone a little overboard with how the heroes are always destroying things. The prop master Ralph had intended to use some for multiple scenes, but nope, not the way our actors were busting through them. Ralph ended up having to rebuild each of those boxes and statues and pots and all that for practically every last scene. Ah, that's okay though, because I know he loved it, as did our second prop master who we ended up hiring after Ralph quit. For the evil replicator, I wanted a really awesome, unique new robot creature. I had even envisioned a mix between a praying mantis and a tractor. I drew this doodle on a napkin and showed it to the special effects lead, but I knew the answer when his face went pale. I mean, how much more work would it have been to squeeze in one extra monster in production? Going through a phase back in the 70s, always had mood rings on. Several of them. I used to pick a color and then I'd make the actors just keep doing the scene over and over until my rings turned that color. That's how you know we're achieving the right tone for the scene, you know. He used to drive Stacy bananas. She'd call me names and swear, and I'd just say, huh? I don't need a ring to tell your mood right now. <laughs> she hated that.
the best part about releasing this new DVD will be? All that sweet, sweet royalty money. Man, I can't wait till that starts rolling in. Of course, the old VHS we put out back in the 80s and the TV syndication pay out royalties too. I'm still waiting on my first payment from all that. Your days are numbered, Dr. Peculiar. There is nowhere to run, and I have transmitted our entire conversation to my father. Indeed she has. You cheated me, Doctor, and used my gold for your own skills. Ah, so pedestrian. The money lenders obstructing the efforts of the scientist. Did you actually think you could get away with this? Actually, I still do. My positronic shield consists of eight energy rings. As long as even one of them remains intact. Silence, traitor! I grow tired of your incessant techno battle. <laughs> As I was saying, my shield is invulnerable to your meager weaponry. And because I am an evil genius, I have fastened the energy rings to a gigantic mutant octopus! And as for you, my dear... <laughs> They could see me now! <laughs>
Well, arm defense system. <laughs> you know, because it's an octopus and and it has many arms. Okay, all right. Okay. You can kiss your cowardly shield goodbye, Doctor. Tut tut. Did you really think I wouldn't have another deadly trap prepared? You, you, Fred eliminated it. Uh, that's all, folks. The greedy emperor gets what's coming to him. The scientist learns he shouldn't play God. Spectacular monsters, large scale pyrotechnics. This is what sci-fi is all about. And about now, we should be seeing the ending title card, the credits, and all the usual fanfare, and the music. Hey, let's not forget, uh, hold up. That's not right. Huh? Patrick, what is all this? What is this footage you're showing me? Sir, are you all right? Well, goodness gracious, man, of course not. You got the wrong movie. But, sir, uh, um... Where'd they get this footage? What, did they film it when I was in the restroom? Impossible. I always used to make Carl go with me to discuss our next shot. Part four? Okay, now. Patrick, something's fishy. Something's real fishy going on here. Ah, I'm going to make some phone calls. This isn't right. Patrick, is there a pace phone around here somewhere? Jeez. I think someone forgot his movie had four chapters in it. <sighs> they 
always stick me with the worst projects for these DVDs. Starting Monday, looking for a new job. Greetings. We have been watching you. You, you. Unidentified life form detected. We are the true Gravorians, the original inhabitants of this planet. There are still many perils within this tower. We must take care that no one else is watching us. Would you look at those costumes? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely made by the same crew. 